Hey there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's revitalize some old potting soil. So I've been asked the question, can you recycle your old potting soil and when is it smart to do so? After all, if we're growing in containers and, and your pots are, are your main uh, garden, then you, know, you don't want to be buying soil every single year and throwing out the old stuff. That's uh, not economically very, very wise nor feasible. So uh, I'm going to show you a few methods today on how to revitalize your old potting soil. And we're going to talk a little bit about when it's safe to do so and when it's not a good idea. And uh, I'm going to give you a few methods. Okay, check out these two pots as examples. This pot had flowers growing in it. I had several, uh, three different kinds of flowers, some alyssum. Um, I don't even know what the rest of this stuff was. But uh, I'm pretty sure that these flowers have probably dropped seeds into this soil. And I'm okay with that because the, the seeds that come up here, I might want them. Uh, I can pull them out and transplant them if they look like they're interesting flower seeds that come up. Um, otherwise, they're just weeds. A weed is any plant that you don't want growing in your soil. So uh, yeah, this is a candidate for recycling because it was heavily mulched. These uh, flowers here were not real heavy feeders. And yeah, there's roots and stuff all down in there. So we'll just clear this out and get the mulch off the top, get the snails out, and we will recycle this stuff. Uh, truth be told, I recycle almost everything in potting soil. The only, the only time that I won't recycle uh, my potting soil is if I had a diseased plant and um, then I won't recycle the potting soil. And by diseased, I really mean, you know, a true disease, not a pest. Now some pests you don't want to recycle the soil. If you had uh, pests that are soil-borne pests, and you'll just have to kind of research uh, what, what, what is the life cycle of the pest that you dealt with. But if they overwinter in the soil, you might not want to recycle that for a few years. Uh, just let it sit for a while, let it sit through a season, or uh, put it in a bin, a dark garbage can, and let it sit in the heat through a summer, and that should give you a usable soil. This other one here, this one has some weeds growing in it, but there's not a lot of weeds growing in it, so I'll just pick those out, and we'll just recycle this as it is, because it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, I don't remember what grew in here, but uh, the root system down below there might tell me if it's still there. Maybe it's composted in place already. But this soil looks pretty good. And I didn't have any diseases in my potted plants last year uh, or last summer. So I can reuse all of this. This is the soil that I used in my single seed challenge. And you can see the remnants of the rice hull mulch that I used on top. Now, rice hull mulch can also be a substitute for perlite or uh, any other kind of stuff you might add to your soil to give it aeration. And uh, so you don't really have to remove your mulch if it's just this, uh, this uh, rice hull. But I'm going to remove a lot of it, but I'm not going to worry about any remainders like that stuff down there. There were spider mites on my single seed challenge this year. And while spider mites are a pest, they do not overwinter in the soil and their eggs don't overwinter in the soil. So I can use this soil, uh, I can reuse it again without worrying about the mites. So that's what we're gonna do with this stuff. Now, one of the things that you can do with your potting soil, especially if you have heavy roots in your soil, is to screen that soil into a wheelbarrow or a wagon. And I've got this screen, this compost screen that I've used and I've shown you how I made this in another video. But I'm uh, going to screen some of my soil through here just to take out any of the, the bigger roots. And every now and then you find a grub in there as well. So it comes in handy. You don't have to do this, but uh, I'm, I'm going to screen my soil just to see what's in it. Got some nice earthworms in there. I don't see any big roots in here, and that's what we're looking for. Big roots, big rocks like that. Take that out. Uh, big chunks that you don't want passing through. Grubs, pests, anything that might be in here that you don't want to put in your new soil. Now, like I said, I like to take the mulch off. There's not much of this mulch left. And the problem with mulch is it's a high carbon material. 
whether it's leaves or wood mulch, you don't want that in the midst of your soil. While it's a good ad addition to your compost, if you leave it in your soil and mix it in, it's going to bind up nutrients uh, as the bacterial life and the fungal life go to work on this. They utilize the nitrogen in your soil that the plants need <clears throat> to break this down. Um, that's why mulch and leaves and things like that on the surface are fine because that's just on the horizon where that nitrogen is being robbed where the mulch meets the soil but you don't want to mix it in let's see what's in this one all right we've got some mulch down at the bottom hopefully that'll filter out got some roots in here you can see these are the kinds of things that you don't really have to worry about if you don't want to these things will compost in place There we go. It looks really good, doesn't it? A couple weeds down in there. Now there are probably weed seeds all in this, but uh, again, with mulching, you can minimize uh, the germination of your seeds, whether it be in a garden bed or in a uh, container. The absolute most easy way that you can reuse your potting soil is just to reuse it. Just plant right into it with whatever you're gonna grow in that pot. Um, Potting soil and most soils, while they are depleted by the plants that grow in them, uh, usually are not fully depleted for a number of seasons. <clears throat> when I do my garden beds, I put one layer of compost on them for each time I, I plant in them, and that's pretty much all the amendments my garden beds as a whole get every year. They do get spot treatments with liquid fertilizer and slow release fertilizer in the holes when I plant some things sometimes, but for the most part, uh, all the fertility in my soil in my main beds comes from uh, a twice annual application of about a half inch of compost on the top. And that's it. That keeps the soil life happy and grows good plants. In our pots, pots are a smaller sample and sometimes that soil can fill up with roots and those plants can really zap the, the soil of its nutrition. And so um, if you're going to plant directly in old potting soil, uh, which I don't necessarily recommend, but sometimes that's all we got. Um, stay on top of those plants as they grow with a very regular and a very good water-soluble fertilizing regimen. You want to give your plants the food they need, and by fertilizing them, you, uh, you can help them to grow healthy even in bad soil. So that's the first method, just use what you got. The second method is to add some fresh potting soil to your, to your old potting soil. I would recommend about a 50-50 mix, but do whatever you got. What's in the fresh potting soil are some of the amendments that they put in there, like the compost. <clears throat> Sometimes there's manure in there. This organic stuff has all kinds of uh, good additions to it um, that you can read on the package that will help to revitalize your soil. Now, it's not the, the full strength stuff, but it's a way to extend your old potting soil and, um, and that 50-50 that mix will give you at least a boost of, of nutrition to help that soil life come alive and give nutrition to your plants. Again, if you're going to do this method also, stay on top of your plants with a, a pretty rigor, rigorous uh, fertilizer regimen as they grow. Uh, Water-soluble fertilizers are immediately available to your plants and I recommend those. The next method I would recommend uh, as we climb up the ladder of fertility, I guess you could call it that, each method is a little bit better than the previous one. Uh, instead of just adding potting soil to your depleted potting soil, add something with a little more kick. I've got here some compost. This is finely screened compost that I made this past year. And this is good stuff. Compost is very diverse in, uh, it, well, compost depends on what you're putting in it. I've put everything but the kitchen sink in my compost. And so it's very fertile stuff. It's got a diverse bunch of nutrients in it and it's good for the soil. And compost, pure compost, you can grow straight in that. But if you add compost to your depleted mix, what you're doing is you're putting in organic material into your soil that the bacteria and the fungal life in that soil can go to work on and that's actually what feeds your plants. It's not the compost itself the plants eat, it's the byproducts of the soil life breaking down your compost. They make the nutrients and the, the elements in that compost available to your plants. And so that's what you want. You want healthy soil life. You don't want just dead soil. It's got to be healthy. Well you got to feed that life and compost is one of the best ways to feed that life. So 
you can put some compost in some depleted soil. A ratio of uh, three parts soil to one part compost is really all you need and that will help to revitalize your soil and bump up the nutritional value of that soil and make all that soil life happy. Um, if you do this method, just adding some compost to your depleted soil, you, you could probably get away with growing your plants through their whole life without fertilization. Although I still like to fertilize, especially if um, I don't have really high quality compost. So that's the next method and I'm gonna do a little bit of that. So I'm gonna take about three gallons of compost. You can see that's my finely sifted compost. And I'm gonna add it to my soil and mix it in real well. But one thing I wanted to show you, I had some peanuts get into my compost this year. And as the peanuts have uh, sprouted, I've got these little peanut plants in my compost. So, interesting, huh? These are going back into the compost so we can eat these peanuts in our next vegetables that feed off of this stuff. Okay, well that was easy. That's revitalized potting soil now. It's one part of compost and three parts of depleted potting mix. And it looks just as good as store-bought stuff. Now, the addition of compost to that soil will kickstart the biological activity in there, but if you really need to use it really quick, um, one way is to take some compost tea and water that soil, saturate that soil with compost tea. And uh, that really makes a... Um, a really nice potting mix that's ready to plant in right away. Otherwise, you might want to let that soil sit for a few weeks and let that that um, compost uh, start to break down, let that soil life bump up into activity. But really, it doesn't matter. Some people say you should wait, some people don't. I'm gonna wait a little while because I'm gonna put some lettuce in containers and my lettuce isn't ready to be planted up yet, so that's why I'm waiting. So the fourth method is an attempt to add into the soil a little bit more of what your plants need. Let's talk about soil briefly. What is soil? In the ground and in nature, soil is a combination of organic material along with inorganic material like mineralized, uh, you know, silt and clay and sand, things that are truly just pulverized rock. And uh, in a lot of places, that makes up the most of the soil. In a forest environment, the top portion of the soil is largely organic material that's fallen down from the trees and it's nice and loamy and rich. It's got a lot of life in it, but dig down and frequently you'll hit the, the mineralized portion of the soil, which is either sand or is clay or a combination of those, lots of silt. That's native soil and your plants actually need some of that mineral stuff. They need to have some clay. They need to have some some, uh, some of the minerals that are over time, gradually and slowly through chemistry, leached out of that rocky material. And so it's a good practice, for example, if you're making your own compost, to throw some clay in it from time to time and let that clay break down um, in your compost. It's a good, good deal. But if you don't have um, uh, that kind of stuff on hand, you can artificially replicate that. And that's what we have to do when we buy potting soil because potting soil is not the earth. Because the problem with native soil and, and all that dense mineralized clay and sand, it either doesn't drain well or it drains far too fast. If you live in a sandy area, you know about that. It just, the, the water just disappears. If you live where I live, we have black gumbo clay and the stuff's like plastic, like gummy plastic. And you can dig a hole and put water in it and come back the next day and it hasn't drained but a millimeter or two, it's, and that's probably evaporation. So um, you, you don't want to put that in a pot. Potting soil is designed to be well draining, but also retain water. And that's why potting soil is largely made of organic material that retains water. If you look on a bag of potting soil like this, you'll find that a large percentage of it is some sort of water retention medium, like peat moss. This stuff is probably half peat moss or more. Peat moss, ground wood, um, cocoa core, all these things retain water, but they also drain well. And so you, that's what we want for our pots. We want to retain water so your plants can survive, but we also don't want them getting waterlogged. Um, but they still need that mineralization. They still need the benefit of native soil. So what we can do is we can add that in with fertilizers like azomite, which is uh, truly a, a, a mineral 
mixture and this will give your plants um, calcium chlorine and sodium and so, uh, soluble potash uh, a little bit of trace minerals and that's what we're really after is all those trace minerals uh, you can also use kelp meal kelp meal is a good source for minerals the, the ocean is filled with all these trace elements that your plants thrive on um, like molybdenum, molybdenum I don't know how to say it I forget I always get confused um, sulfurs, uh, cadmiums, all these weird little things that you don't think your plants need, but they do. Well, in the native soil, the clay and the sands and all that provide that for your plants. But in our pots, we need to add that in. I would also suggest for the very best potting mix that you're going to revitalize to put some slow release fertilizer uh, in there. And I often use this Dr. Earth's and it's got um, a whole bunch of good things for your, for your plants, including uh, bacterial uh, elements. It's got several several types of bacterial. It's got several types of mycorrhizal uh, fungi, and this helps to boost your your plant your soil life. And after all, all that bacteria and that fungus in your soil that's what breaks down the organic material to provide nutrients for your plants. And so you want that. This stuff has a lot of it in there. It's not just NPK. It's not just NPK plus some trace elements. It's NPK, trace elements, and mycorrhizal fungus and bacteria that is good for your soil. So I'll add about a handful or two of this into the, the mix we've just made, and that will help to inoculate that soil with the good stuff that we need. I'll also add a handful or two of this azomite, which will give some of the minerals that our plants need, and that soil will be totally revitalized. It'll actually be better soil than we bought when we brought one of these bags home from the store because we've taken care to put in the soil what our plants need. All right, so I'm just gonna take a handful and another handful. You don't need much of this, uh, this uh, azomite, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a couple of handfuls of this Dr. Earth's. And I really like this stuff. I use this every year. It is slow release fertilizer, but remember we're inoculating our soil with all that other good life. So put that in there, mix it in really well. Use your hands, use a tool, use whatever you want. If you really want to get this going, hose it down briefly, get it moist. Don't get it sopping wet, just get it moist a little bit and that'll wake up all that uh, bacteria and that fungal life in there and this stuff will be ready to plant in a, in a couple of days. You could plant in it right away if you want. Show you how to plant. I have a couple of Brussels sprouts left over. Two of them in one plug. We'll have to thin them. Can you grow a Brussels sprout in a container? I've seen people grow them in this size of container. So we're going to try it. I'm going to put this in here, just as simple as that. And I'm going to put some mulch over the top of it just to keep the weeds down. Now, Brussels sprouts are brassicas. They're pretty heavy feeders, so all that life that we've put in here uh, is going to wake up. And when I water this over the next few days, it's going to wake up and start working on that compost that we put in here and uh, really give a, a good chance for this Brussels sprout to get started and to grow nice and large. We'll see. I'm just reaching behind me and grabbing some of that rice hull off my single seed challenge pot. Well, there you have it. What's in this pot is better than what came out of the bag. We've revitalized old potting soil, saving money. Uh, but if you just want to cut your soil in half with depleted potting soil and new mix, that's one method. If you want to add all the fertilizer and good stuff to it, that's another method. Whatever you do, you can always reuse the stuff. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. Hey, like us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, I invite you to do so. It means a lot to us. We're trying to hit 100,000 this spring. And uh, wow, that would be great, wouldn't it? Hey, happy gardening to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.